What is going on, all my fellow mobile gamers out there? Today, in my mobile gaming quest, we are going to play Cursed Treasure number two, which is a new, well, it's actually not new, it's a really, really old tower defense game, but I just realized that that's the genre of games that I actually haven't played in a very, very long time on this channel. So for those of you who haven't played one in a long time either, here is one of the really, really great ones. And yes, of course, Tower Defense games means armor games. If you guys played any browser games back in the day, it's kind of impossible not to know about armor games. But in case you don't, they have made some really banger Tower Defense games, and this is one of them. Loving this game, it's not new, by the way, it's actually rather old, but it does do a few things that are kind of interesting. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel, but there are a few things, though, that does make this game stand out from the rest. And the first of those is some really interesting map designs, because we have something here in these levels that I actually haven't seen in any other Tower Defense games out there. And those are these types of buildings that I'm clicking right now. There are three of them on this map here. Now, this building will generate more gold if we upgrade it. This one up here will generate more mana if we spend gold to upgrade it. And now this one down here is gonna heal our opponents, unless we pay enough gold, of course, and then we can make it stop healing our opponents. So as you can imagine, not only do we have to choose what sort of upgrade path we want for our towers, but no, 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 now we also have to choose when we wanna upgrade these buildings. For example, I think I'm gonna go upgrade this one now. Actually, I'm gonna do it twice just to get some more gold faster. Now we wanna get more mana as well, so maybe we should go upgrade this one here. And we need the mana, by the way, to use special abilities such as, you guys can see I'm using one right now, there you go, to put some fear into that opponent's eyes so that they start running away. Oh, wait! No! <laughs> I think one actually got away with one of our gems. Ah, oh, man! We had one job, Nimble Squad, we had one job, and that was to protect those gems up there in the top right corner, and we failed. Now, that's the other interesting thing about this game, is the star system. So these levels we're playing are single-player campaign missions, and we can get up to three stars per match, which is obviously what we're going for, but I can tell you guys we already failed that, because the only way to do that is to avoid having any opponents reach any of our gems whatsoever. Now, we're gonna get two stars as long as we have just a single gem left on the map, but if no gems are left on the map, of course, we will lose completely. So the next thing I really like about this game are the many different upgrades we have for our tower. So for example, right now we can pick between this one here, which is the Dreadful Crypt, or this one, the Frosty Crypt. So the difference between these two is that this one is gonna freeze down the enemies every seven seconds, and this one has a 20% chance of frightening the enemies, which means that they'll run away. So I'm gonna go for that one, I quite like that one. But there are many of these upgrade paths, and that is another thing that of course many other tower defense games have done before, but I just really find them interesting in this game. I find the fact that these towers have debuffs, such as fear, that they can apply onto the enemies, that actually does make a difference. It makes the game much, much more interesting to play. We aren't doing very well here though, but the good news is is that if we fail completely and we have to go back and kind of replay this level over again, at the very least, we will have gotten some experience points and we can use those skill points that we get from leveling up to then upgrade some different passive skills, such as one that makes the gems slowly creep back to the cave from which they came, uh, such as, let's see if we have a gem on the map right now. We actually don't have a gem on the map right now, but you guys would be able to see it. You might have seen it previously in this video. Otherwise, just scroll back a bit and you, you will definitely see that. So those are really, really beneficial, but obviously we have to pick the right upgrades and that's what makes that part of the game interesting. Now let's see if we can defeat the boss here. Ooh, okay, so we are gonna get away with, I think, a single star from this level here. Wasn't this the last one? This wasn't even the last one. <laughs> oh man, okay. Okay, guys, look at the gem though. Look at the gem, are you ready? And there you go. It's moving back slowly, as you guys can see. Get back there. Get back there. We're gonna upgrade this tower here. Another thing, by the way, is that the towers, even though we have enough gold, they can't be just immediately upgraded. They have to level up. You guys can see that they're getting experience points. You can see that this one here is on its way to be upgradable to level three. You can see the small experience bar right now near the, near the middle of the building. So we still have one gem left, and I don't know how many waves we have left. Hopefully not all too many. Oh no, they're getting to it. They're getting to it. They're not gonna get away with it though. We may have to start using some of our mana for using some of the debuffs. I, I always forget to use those. And obviously, <laughs> that makes a big difference. Let's upgrade this tower here as well. And we may just wanna build out a few more towers. Let's say we build out one here. And how about we upgrade this one here so that it doesn't keep healing uh, the opponents. All right, so the gym is back in its cave. And we're doing quite okay now. I feel like we're starting to get things under control again. We are running out of gold now though, so we should have probably upgraded this one here right from the start. But luckily, look at that, we got some gems as well. And these skulls can be used in here in the shop to give us some sort of instant boost. And this is how the game monetizes as well, by the way. We can buy more of these skulls for real life money, going up to five 
US dollars. So yeah, I mean, that is gonna make the game much, much more easy. So I guess you could say that the game is kind of paid to win. I mean, at least if you spend enough money on the game, you are almost certainly gonna win. So yeah, I guess that's actually paid to win. Didn't think about that before recording this video. It doesn't feel that bad though. Let me put it like that. It doesn't feel that bad. I have heard from some people, and this is, this is probably the biggest issue with the game. I've heard from some people that it does get very, very grindy after level 21, 22, 23. But it seems that most people still agree that it's definitely still worth playing the game though, at the very least for those first 20 levels. And honestly, if you're used to playing tower defense games, I don't think you're gonna run into all too many issues. You just have to keep playing the game, keep upgrading your skills. And we're gonna go have a look at those skills as soon as this level here is over. It looks like we have only three waves left. So let's get this one upgraded, this building down here completely so that now at the very least it doesn't heal our enemies anymore. And what do you guys say? Let's plant a few more towers. So let's make some room here. We should have probably made room for more towers sooner on in this level here. So I'll definitely do that the second time around because you know, we're only really gonna get one star here. So we have to go back. Of course, we have to get three stars in every single one of these levels. So guys, what is your favorite tower defense game? Let me know down in the comment section down below. And now look at us win, hopefully, this very, very last level. We may have to use a petrify skill here again or fear skill or whatever it's called. And maybe another one, a meteor strike. There we go. I think that was it. Let's see. Was that it? Yes! Woo! Okay, <laughs> there we go. Killed enemies, 71 out of 75. But, you know, that was only enough for one star. So let's see if we got enough experience points, though, to level up to rank 7. We did indeed! So that means that now we can go in here and we can upgrade some of our skills. So what do we want to go for? I say we go for maybe this one here. Decreases the mana cost for Meteor by 5%. Or we could go for this one here, which I feel might be really, really useful. Meteor Strike leaves a smoldering pool on the ground for 6 seconds. So let's upgrade that. And let's also spend some on upgrading the amount of mana we have from the beginning. Let's get that all the way up there. And let's decrease the amount of gold it's gonna cost to uh, keep building more of the same type of buildings. So as you guys can see, there's a ton of levels in this game. This is about it for the game. I said it in the beginning and I'll say it again. This game isn't exactly reinventing the genre, but I think you guys will really enjoy it even if you played a ton of tower defense games because the game is seasonally challenging and it's just overall a really, really solid tower defense game. So now let's get into the mobile gaming news of the day, which is that Reality Class, which is basically Pokemon Go meets Call of Duty, has now soft launched in the UK. So if you're in the UK, go download it and let me know what you think about it. I personally can't wait to play it. It's not available in Denmark yet, so I literally can't play it yet, but I can't wait to play it though. The entire premise of being able to fight other players in the real world, but then with an augmented reality overlay just sounds so awesome. Go do yourself a favor and watch the trailer for this game at the very least. It has us literally duck and run around the world with our phone as if we were playing a real-time shooter game. I just hope that it can live up to the hype, but uh, just like most of you guys, I will have to wait a bit longer before I'll be able to get my hands on it. So for now, and until tomorrow, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.